Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Uh, today I'm going to show you something that's really super easy. A few days ago someone posted on my potato pizza recipe. It was a recipe that I make. Uh, that's the recipe where you use baking powder in your dough rather than using yeast. If you want a little bit of yeast, you could just sprinkle just a little bit of that salt rising yeast where it will give you the taste of yeast. But basically, that dough is made with baking powders, what you call a self-rising dough. So today I'm going to show you how you can make a very easy two-ingredient recipe and it gives you that beautiful sour dough taste. There's so many things you can make with this recipe and it's very, very simple. Okay, we're going to start off with our mixing bowl. Now you don't need to use a mixing bowl, which you could simply use by hand if you want to, but I'm going to show you one recipe using a mixing bowl and another one where you can mix it by hand. So this recipe is easy. If you don't have any self rising dough, what I could do is right on the side here, I am going to put a list on how you can make it yourself. It's very simple. Making self rising dough is like three ingredients. That's all you really need. But because we have self-rising flour, it's basically two ingredients. And it's great to have that flour on hand or have it made already. This way, if your kids say, Ma, I want, I want some bread, boom, your bread is done. Ma, I want some pizza, boom, pizza is done. There's no waiting. You don't have to make that phone call and cost you $40, $50 for it. A pizza or two where you can just make it with like a couple of dollars so here we go we're gonna start off with using I am going to try and be as precise as I can which is almost impossible sometimes because I pretty much eyeball everything okay so I would say that's about a cup yeah, one cup of self rising dough. And to that, we're going to put, uh, I'm using, the brand that I'm using is President's Choice. Uh, it's basically a plant based, of course, being vegan that we are. It's just a coconut yogurt, plain, nothing else in there, just plain. Uh, there's no sweetness, there's no fruit in it. It's just plain, plain yogurt. And what's good about this, it becomes a high protein dough, right? So we're going to use one cup of this yogurt. You know what? I'm going to use two halves. This way I don't make a big mess. All right. Here's one half. And here's, that's about another half. So that's like one cup of yogurt. And that's it, guys. That's all you need in this recipe. Then what you do to the dough, that's really up to you. I've made uh, what you call naan bread with it. I have made buns with this recipe. Uh, you can make pizza. Uh, there's so many things. We're going to make a dessert today. Very easy to do. Okay, we're going to put my dough hook on. You know what? would have been faster if I just used a spoon rather than putting this machine together. It's taking longer to put the machine together than if I would have mixed it by hand. Okay, so we're going to mix this. Okay, that's it. So this will be a very sticky dough. So what you're going to need is you're going to take this and you're going to put it on a floured counter or you could just add just a little extra flour just to get the stickiness off this dough because you want to be able to handle it, right? So I'm just going to remove this. All right. We're just going to take a little pinch of flour. And we're just going to scrape this down. Now, that's how easy it is to make this dough. Here we go. We're going to flour my board. And we're going to 
drop it on there. Yeah, I want to get my hand all sticky. Okay. Okay, so we're just going to careful, you want to use just the top of your fingers because that yogurt will make the dough a little sticky. Turn on my oven. We want the oven at 350, 375, depending uh, how hot your oven is. Not every oven is the same, guys, so you want to be careful with that. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. I'm gonna get me a little organized here. Okay, my hands are clean and washed. So you do want to be a little careful when you make a dough like this because uh, the yogurt does tend to make it a little sticky. But this is a self-rising dough, and it gives it that beautiful, beautiful taste of sourdough okay we're gonna use a rolling pin for this now like I said this one I am making uh, a dessert but there's so many recipes you can make with this dough and what's good about it is when your kids come home crying say ma I am starving and you didn't have time to make something uh, you can make them a nice little pizza uh, there's so many things that you can make them okay so we're going to just give this a roll out. Remember, it's a very delicate dough, very fluffy and delicate. So you want to be able to do this without, there we go, without destroying it. Okay. There we go. Now, to this, we want to be able to put a little bit of fat, so I'm going to get some vegan butter. I mean, you can melt it. Oh, did I do that? I turned on my, uh, my kettle by accident. Okay, you can melt your butter and brush it on, or do what I do. I kind of just put it in. It's going to melt anyhow once it gets into the into the oven okay there we go we want to be careful don't want to put too much either and we're going to put some sugar and cinnamon and this again it's up to you how much you want to put and of course i'm going to put some beautiful beautiful raisins now, if you have apples, you could slice some apples in here. Remember, the dough was really fast. It's uh, it's what you do to it later. Okay. There we go. Uh, maybe a little extra sugar. I'll be right back. There we go. Oh, don't mind my dog. Okay, just a little extra brown sugar. Now, you don't have to put a lot of sugar inside your dough uh, because we are going to top it with a delicious um, maple icing to go on top. Now, oh, my daughter's talking to her grandmother. Yeah, she sent out some Christmas cards and she sent one to her grandmother with a picture of her and her grandma and grandpa in it. And I guess she called to say thank you. And I'm sure it touched a lot of old memories because she really misses her husband. So, and it's the holidays, right? So it's all about memories. Look, I'm going to get very emotional. It's all about memories and 
the people you love and miss. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> I shouldn't be crying. I'm making you a recipe. Okay, so here we go. So raisins, brown sugar. You really don't have to overload the inside of the stove because what you're going to do is that you're going to put a beautiful icing on top. Okay, so we're going to roll this up. And which way should I go? I think I'm going to go this way. And you want to be careful because this is a very, very delicate dough. So just slowly roll it. If you have one of these, that'll help. Just bring it over. There we go. Just keep rolling it. There we go. And remember, this recipe is really easy. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. There we go. And now we're just going to cut it. Is this going to do it? Let's see. Yeah, that should be good. We're going to cut it into rings. Trying to get them all the same size. And look how easy this was to make a recipe for your family. Wasn't that easy? Okay. Okay, so this is me being very lazy. Um, I just put a little bit of parsley on this pie dish that I'm using. Uh, I just put a little bit of parsley at the bottom because this is already, it has fat in it. We put the butter so we don't have to grease the parchment. We just have to put these in. So I'm going to start placing them for now and then I'll show you what it looks like. I don't want to squish these. Okay, so we're going to start off for the middle and work our way around. There we go. And wasn't that easy? Look how long it took to make this. No time at all. So we're going to put this here. And we're going to put this piece of dough also because I waste nothing. I don't care if this has got an empty shell. Okay, so there it is. Could have done a better job putting this together in my tray. But it's going to be just as good. So simple enough guys and this is basically using just that simple two ingredient dough and if you want to make a larger batch of course make a larger uh, batch for yourself but very simple to make guys so we're going to put this in the oven i am doing a 375 and i'm going to tell you exactly how long it takes me to cook it uh, and then you'll have the recipe written on the side for you. But there you go. I'm going to put them in and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so we want to make uh, we want to make a batch of this flour and always have it handy. It's really, really easy to, easy to do. So I'm going to get a bowl. And I'm only going to do one batch because I have already plenty of it. Uh, but basically you want... Get my measuring spoon. Now, if you would be making uh, cinnamon rolls, uh, you would be having to let it sit and rise. Uh, you would have to uh, wait a lot longer than the amount of time that it took us to make those rolls. It really didn't take much time at all. Just make sure you have a little extra flour on the side. And if you're using flour to flour your board, it doesn't even have to be your self-rising flour. You could just use your all-purpose flour. All right, so we're going to push that aside. Now, this is how simple it is to make this flour. Remember, I'm not measuring because I never really do. But you need one cup of all-purpose flour. I'm using organic unbleached flour and to this we're going to put a half a half teaspoon of salt and we're going to need one and a half teaspoons of either magic or baking powder one and a half oh there you go and i'm going to put just a little extra because my flour was a little extra but if you're doing it precise then just make sure you knock it off and you make it completely uh, the right measurements. That's all it is. That's your self-rising 
flower. Now, if you would be buying the self-rising flower at the store, I'm sure it's going to cost you more than your regular flower. So it really it doesn't take a lot of time to make. Have it prepared. So when your kids come home and say, Ma, I'm hungry. Or you just want to surprise your family after dinner and you want to make them a little dessert. You have your flour ready for you. Okay, that's how simple it is to make this flour. Okay, so let's make something else. Now we have my one cup recipe, right? And I am going to use, of course, my one cup of plain yogurt. Okay, my yogurt. Okay, there. There we go. And we have our one cup of plain yogurt. And this is how easy it is to mix it with just a spoon. So I'm going to put my hands in there. Oh, I'm losing my... There we go. And what's nice about this is it gives it that nice little sour taste, guys. Okay, so now, like I said, you don't have to use the self-rising uh, flour for your cutting board. Uh, you can just use regular flour. Let me just put some down. And we're going to knead this up. No waiting. You don't have to let it rise like you would regular pizza dough. And I have a recipe and I added herbs into the dough. I have a recipe already up. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to make a batch of this flour. And there we go. Just keep adding a little bit of flour. Because it is a sticky dough thanks to the deliciousness of our yogurt. Just use your fingertips so they don't get too sticky. Lightly, very lightly, you don't want to. There we go. Now, if you want, you could be making naan bread with this, and that's very simple. You just cut your desired shapes or the amount you want to do. You could divide it by eight, depends on the size of your naan bread. Then with a rolling pin, you lightly roll it out, and then it goes into your cast iron pan. Okay, and you can make your naan bread, or you could simply make some pizza. So I'm going to make a small pizza for Erica. Okay, I'm going to cut this. Now remember guys, if you want a firmer dough when you're making this uh, self-rising dough, uh, you can add just a little extra flour. That's really up to you. I, I normally do this all by eye, I don't, by feel and eye. I don't, um, I don't measure things. That's a blessing and a problem sometimes because sometimes I gotta keep working on that recipe till I know exactly how much of this and how much of that. But I usually do not measure, yes, as you can tell with all my recipes. All my videos, you're going to notice that I just put my ingredients in. Okay, so here we go. We have a nice little bundle of dough. Okay, so we're going to make a small pizza for Erica. So we're going to divide this in a quarter. Here's my half, so I am going to just take a chunk. Push this over to the side. Yeah. Okay. And we have our little dough ball. OK, 
Okay, a little rolling pin will help. I am off camera today, guys. I'm like off to the side. What is going on? Thank you. You want to go get me a jar of artichokes, Erica? In the garage? Okay, now if you're making non bread, you would have your skillet or your cast iron pan on your burner. Uh, you would simply just drop it in and it becomes like a pita bread or like a, or you could call it non bread. You could make some seitan and you could wrap it up and make some souvlaki with it. Very easy to do. Um, or roll it out and put it in a cast iron pan and we're going to make a little pizza. We're going to just. Put a little bit of olive oil and we're going to take our little dough there we go and into the cast iron pan it goes there we go now you can make this a blonde pizza uh, the recipe where i showed you how to make us with the self-rising dough uh, i put uh, potatoes I'll link you that video it's you should watch it it's really good uh, I put a potato and um, zucchini on top and you could just put a little bit of pesto or cilantro oil whatever you like on top and that could be your base uh, or you could just like if your kids only like tomato and cheese so we're gonna make this a little gourmet for Erica because I love my daughter and I'm gonna make something delicious and show you how simple it is Okay, here is my pesto. Remember, it's really up to you what you want to put on top. There we go. We got some pesto. Okay, we're going to cut some fresh tomato. Okay, we have a little bit of tomato. We're going to put some artichokes. So push that over. We've got a little bit of artichokes that we're just going to break up. God, I'm getting hungry doing this. Okay, a little bit of artichokes. Well, we're gonna put that there. And I'll leave the butt ends. So good. Okay, we're gonna crack some pepper. And we're not even going to put cheese on this. Maybe I'll put some of my raw cheese on there. But if you want, you could put a mozzarella on this. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of salt. I'm going to use my Malden smoked salt. You know me, I love my smoke. Or you could even use black salt if you want on top of there. Okay, a little bit of salt. And we're going to put... Uh, maybe I'll do fresh thyme. I'll be right back, guys. There we go. A little bit of fresh thyme. You don't want to put too much of those okay and we're gonna put some of my delicious notice what I have here it is a raw cranberry blue cheese so we're gonna put a little bit of that for her not a lot we're just gonna break it up for her so she just gets a little bit here and there and that's it who says cheese has to be a melting cheese right as long as it tastes good, that's what's important. There we go. I'm going to put the rest of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. There we go. Just put that right there. 
So remember guys, you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be an Einstein to make beautiful food. All you have to do is love to make beautiful food. And when it's nice to the eyes, when it's beautiful to the eyes, people just want to eat your food. It's just, it's automatic. Eyes, mouth, eyes, mouth. So I'm going to push this aside for now because I'm sure I'm going to have, have to make one for my husband uh, for when he comes home. But here's the pizza that we're going to put in the oven. And I'm going to make now a maple icing to put on top of our delicious, delicious cinnamon rolls that I'm going to be taking out of the oven soon. Uh, it's already been in there for about 45 minutes. I'm going to give it maybe another uh, five minutes till they get nice and golden and then I'm going to take them out. But remember, every oven is different, right? Uh, I'm going to put the pizza in on a higher heat. Uh, but if you feel uh, you want to cook your, um, your rolls at... Uh, 350 you might have to keep them in there a little longer uh, 375 I'm cooking them nice and slow in my oven uh, because 375 is a low heat for me I usually cook everything blasting uh, but 375 I'm gonna keep it a little longer till it gets nice and golden you don't want to scorch them either right so you want to lower that oven and just keep looking at them they're gonna start getting nice and big on you I'm gonna show you already so far aren't they beautiful so they're already getting nice and golden, but I'm going to keep them in there a little longer. Then we're going to put a nice icing on top, and then we're going to throw Erica's pizza in so she could have a nice little lunch. Because what time is it now? It is already lunchtime for her. So that's going to go to the side. I'm going to make myself a delicious... Mm, look how beautiful that is. Tell me that is not just the most beautiful cheese ever. And this is a new cheese. I just made this. But I'm going to make another cheese that my daughter loves eating so much. And I'll show you a recipe on that. It's a very simple, simple recipe. It's just a matter of waiting. Okay, so I'm going to push this aside. Oh my God, guys. I wish you could smell this. When are we going to get smell -a vision How beautiful and how easy was this? Was this not easy for you? Now, uh, we're going to let these cool off. And we're going to make a quick icing and then we're going to pour it on top. And I know Erica is going to probably be the first one to attack them for sure. So I'm going to put Erica's pizza in. I jacked up my oven. 4.30 start. There we go. Okay, I'm going to put a timer for 15. I always check my stuff. I always start with a low number where I know I'm not going to end up burning it. Uh, and then I go back and I look at it and I see if I want to cook it a little longer or if I want to take it out. But I've got it at 4.30 right now and I put 15 minutes, but I know I probably need to keep that pizza in a little longer. But that's okay, right? We have all day to do this. Okay, so there they are. Aren't they beautiful? I just want to bring it closer to you. There we go. Now, something else you can do is take a little bit of this deliciousness a little extra fat you know it's the holidays right I mean you can leave the fat out or you can add some fat okay so there we go just a little brush now how simple is making icing simple you, you start off with a little bit of sugar and remember if you don't have the right amount you can always make a little extra it's not the end of the world right and we start with a little at a time. You do not want to start going crazy because then you're going to flood your icing. You know when you've got it. Keep feeding that sugar. See? Keep feeding it. A little extra maple. Oh. I didn't put too much, but that wouldn't be a problem either. I just would have to add extra sugar, right? Okay, we're going to put just a little tiny drop of vanilla. Not a lot, guys. OK, 
Come on. There we go. And we're going to mix. Hmm. We're going to put a little bit of salt, smoky salt to this. Or we can simply add it on top later. So I'm just going to put a tiny little pinch in my, just a tiny pinch, guys. You don't want a lot because you're going to add some on top over my left shoulder. There we go. And this is nice and thick. I'm going to put just a little extra drizzle of maple. Remember, there's no perfect measurement. It's how you like this. You want it thick. You make it thick. Ooh, look at that. You want it runny. You make it runny. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. That dark maple is just like the best. You can't beat a dark maple. My daughter's eyeballing these things already. So I think that's good. We're gonna test it. be able to start dripping ah so good so what do you think about this recipe guys was it easy now if you want you could dice apples you could put or little chunks of apples you could put little chunks of apples in your in your roll it's really up to you what you want to do to it the smell of it and you can put this if you have extra icing you could always put it um, ooh. Yeah, I want some gooeyness see it was perfect it was a perfect amount got to eyeball things and if you have leftover put it in a little ramekin and just cover it up and I'm sure you can use it on your next batch you're gonna make because let me tell you once you have these that's all you want to eat every day. <laughs> it's the holidays. Okay, there you go, guys. Wasn't that easy? Wasn't that simple? And this was all done with that two-ingredient dough. Um, maybe I'll come back and make another video and make another surprise dish for you because it's really, really easy to use this. Uh, this dough. So I hope you like this recipe. Start making batches of that. Eric, my daughter is just eyeballing this. Oh no, 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 no yet. Not yet. I gotta take pictures. She's already eyeballing. Her nose is just like coming back and forth. Um, so make yourself a batch of that self rising. And if you don't want to make it, go out, buy yourself a bag, and keep it in your pantry because it's always good to have. So I'm gonna say I love you guys. I'm gonna sprinkle and make this very Christmassy. I'm gonna put some snow on this. How does the song go? Let it snow, let it snow. Okay, there you go, guys. Christmas in no time at all. And there you go, guys, how easy was that? And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe there's a little bell on my main page go there click that bell and you will be notified every time i put up a video and also if you go into my um my under my video uh, under information uh there's some amazon links uh, you don't have to buy the product but if you go shopping through that link uh, that helps my channel out 
and it helps support me. Uh, so I, re I really, really appreciate that. So I'm going to say thank you for coming by. And if you try, don't forget, come back. Let me know how you like it. And um, I'm going to see you in my next video, guys. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at that gooiness. Hot, hot, hot. Ooh. Look at this, guys. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Erica, come on, have it, babe. Mm-hmm. Is it hot? So good. There you go. Watch out, it's hot. like this make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends